Hello, friends of the Bellingham Festival of Music. Uh, my name is Marcelo Leninger, and I'm so excited to be here, this beautiful place, conducting your festival orchestra. Uh, this is a really nice program. Um, each piece in the program, it's so beautiful and so special. Um, we're starting this program with a piece by a uh, Ukrainian composer, Valentin Silvestrov. And Silvestrov is um, a very interesting composer. I actually discovered his music not too long ago. And he, he lives now in Germany, in Berlin, but he's from Ukraine. And he said once that he is not trying to compose new music, but his music is an echo of music that already exists. And so this piece he composed in 2001, it's called Him, and it's a piece for orchestra um, of only strings. And it's so beautiful and there has a feeling of um, ethereal and very touching. And I was thinking before a piece like the Tchaikovsky Violin Concerto, how can you start a concert? Uh, without spoiling that piece. And I think this hymn by uh, Silvestrov is perfect because it puts you in a calm, nice state of mind for the fire of the Tchaikovsky Violin Concerto. Um, another interesting aspect of this uh, piece is that there's a major, there's so, there are many solos um, among the, the strings and many divisies, which is different players playing different things, but there's a major solo violin that was given to the principal second violin. Usually you will have the concert master playing the main violin solo, but here the most difficult violin solo in the piece, it's for the principal second violin. And um, the piece kind of ends as a, almost as a unanswered question which is a very interesting and touching way to finish a, uh, finish a piece. Uh, the next piece on the concert is Tchaikovsky, uh, the Violin Concerto. That piece is uh, really, really, really special. It's probably one of the most well-known violin concertos ever written. Uh, I'm sure many of you know the piece. It's uh, a piece in three movements, and um, in the first movement, you have this major and long cadenza for the violin. So the violin playing alone. And um, the second movement, it's a uh, cancioneta. I think that's uh, what is the title of the movement. And he, Tchaikovsky, I think together with Schubert, uh, they are perhaps the, the two most, the masters of melodies. And so one of the things of the Tchaikovsky Violin Concerto, I think is all the melodies that is presented in this music. There's so many of them and one after the other, they're so beautiful. And this cancioneta has this mellow, warm, um, incredible melody, but interestingly, the rest of the orchestra, not the soloist, but the rest of the orchestra, uh, the strings, they play with mutes. And so it creates this really different color. They play the whole movements with mutes and it creates this really different color um, that gives a special warmth to this uh, concerto. And then you have the last movement, which is fiery, virtuosic, um, incredible um, last movement, which is a dance, but it's a really kind of exciting virtuosic dance. And I thought, I think it'd be great for you to hear from the soloist himself. Uh, Blake Pouliard is a, a wonderful friend. We performed this piece together many times, and I'm so excited to have him here um, performing this great piece for you. I'm so happy to have Blake Puglia here with me 
and uh, we're performing the Tchaikovsky Violin Concerto in beautiful Bellingham with your festival orchestra. And we just finished our first rehearsal yes. for the concert that is tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, and it went um, really well, it was beautiful. Totally. And this is a piece actually that we performed a few times together. And so it's always great to, uh, yeah. to get together and do it again. Um, and I understand it's your first time here. Totally, yes. I've been to Seattle many times and I've been to Vancouver, which of course is on the other side because I'm Canadian. But I was never able to actually kind of make it into this middle spot, um, which is just, it's kind of unfortunate because it's so beautiful here. The vineyards are nice, the mountains are nice. I mean, yeah. it's a stunning place. Yeah. It's really nice to be here. Yeah, and yeah. you? First time too. Fantastic. I went yeah. to Seattle once, but this is the first time. I love the combination of water and mountains. I know. It's so gorgeous. It's just, it's just something human about being amongst this kind of nature and this like topography. Yeah. That is so nice. It feels really comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> and playing Tchaikovsky. Yes. So, uh, what is your what is your relationship with that piece? Oh, I mean, oh, you played so many times. Very much so. Yeah. I mean, I think that Tchaikovsky is one of those pieces that you know, for us as violinists, is um, it's it's something that reappears your entire career. You know, it's it's really kind of become amongst. I feel like what we would consider maybe like the major four concertos where we have the Tchaikovsky concerto, the Beethoven violin concerto, the Brahms violin concerto, and the Mendelssohn mm -hmm. violin concerto. These are kind of like our major, you know, stakes that we're gonna have throughout mm -hmm. our career. So something that I definitely learned when I was a student, and um, actually the first time I ever learned this concerto was in college. Um, and I was selected to play at the, um, the gala for uh, my school. And so I spent a lot of time learning it and a lot of time kind of evaluating it and really trying to learn the ins and outs and the physicality of it. Um, and it was, you know, it was so stressful when you first did it. Because, I mean, the first movement is such an epic, you know, it's, it's, it's a concerto itself. Mm. Um, and so to have that was so kind of daunting. Um, and then what's been really fascinating, I'm sure that you know too, is revisiting it through, you know, kind of my career has been pretty short so far, but, you know, over the years, um, playing it a bunch here and then putting it down, playing it and putting it down and seeing how playful it is and how beautiful and how diverse, um, and also how an amazing, uh, what an amazing or orchestrator that Tchaikovsky was. Oh, yeah. And it's been, it's so special and it's so yeah. nice, you know? And the melodies, I think he was a master of melodies. Oh, I think the best. I would say that he probably, out of anyone I've ever heard, his melodies are just sensational. He yeah. really understands how to get people to hum their tune over and over. You know, you mentioned something interesting uh, about, you know, just this piece being enjoyable. And not only I agree, but I, ha having the experience to play that piece with you so many times, yeah. like, it's always different. Always. And it's always in the moment, and and I love that because yeah. <laughs> um, you know when you think about Tchaikovsky as a person, as a composer, and the fact that this concerto specifically yeah, yeah. was in love uh, with a friend, and they're spending some time in in Italy, I think, when he was um, composing this right. um, this piece, and so there is a lot of that feeling of yeah. getting to know someone and yeah. developing that kind of relationship Absolutely. and passion, love, enjoyment, yeah. happy, and you know, so yeah. there's so much of that. Totally. And, um, and I always had the feeling that you, that's your approach, maybe to music in general, but for that piece, for sure. Absolutely, you know, yeah. There's so much yeah. in the moment. Totally, yeah, I think exactly what you said, I feel like, especially with so much of Tchaikovsky's music, but particularly with this, which is really kind of the main source of material we have for violin soloists. He, exactly like you said, not all, he was a very impassioned person in the way that he committed to love and emotion. And, you know, I mean, even when the piece was premiered, when he first wrote it for the violinist Leopold Auer, Auer condemned it. He said, this is unplayable and it's insane. And that, like, you have notes from Tchaikovsky saying, that, like, really crushed him because he wrote something so technically difficult, but that is so embedded with raw emotion that I think the challenge or the thing that I've enjoyed the most is exactly that, is the fact that we get to work together and we've played this a few times, there is that kind of courtship that we can kind of 
bring with the orchestra and the soloist. And I think much like that of being in love, you have to be spontaneous and you have to kind of react to what's around you. You know, you can't just kind of sit there and map everything out because like love, it changes in a heartbeat, you know? Yeah. So, and I think that's what's so fun about the concerto. It like, it's such a wonderful piece of music to explore and have fun with and just really lean into those things. But of course, working with you, that's what makes it so pleasurable is that it's so nice that we both appreciate to adapt to one another and do something in the moment mm -hmm. because it's fun yeah. and that's what you know at the at the end of the day we're making music yeah you know? so that's you know, let's do that you know what do you think <laughs> of the orchestra i love them they're so lovely i mean it's it is really you know as we said off camera i mean it's really wonderful to work with a group of people who are so adaptable so quickly and i think everyone here really has that kind of passion to to really work and to actually create something nice and create something beautiful, um, which is really wonderful. And, you know, I didn't, I don't get a sense that, you know, there's this idea of just playing for the sake of playing, particularly with something like Tchaikovsky Concerto, which is, you know, one of the most kind of iconic pieces of, you know, the violin repertoire or classical repertoire. Um, but, and, and everyone is so lovely. And I'm actually very, very close with the um, principal oboe player, oh, Harrison. Nice. Um, we uh, went to the Aspen Music Festival for years together. And so, and we lived like next door. So oh, cool. we've known each other a long time. And yeah, it's always wonderful to see old friends again. That's great. Yeah. Well, Blake, thank you so much. I'm looking Please. forward Me too. to doing this piece again yes. and, and having fun with it. But it's always great to work with you. Absolutely. So. Same, same here. I can't wait. Yeah. <laughs>
uh, music. I think in addition to all this character of Dvorak that is so imprinted in this uh, music, um, another aspect of Dvorak is that he loved nature. He loved nature. And specifically, he loved birds. Uh, in fact, he had pigeons and doves, and he just loved... Once he said that um, he learned music more from the birds than from anybody else, and that the music comes uh, from the birds. And this symphony, you definitely can hear a lot of elements of nature. Um, there are many birds, many bird calls uh, in the symphony, and of course the majority of them are given to the flute, and um, you can hear the horses. Uh, so many elements of nature. He composed this piece, uh, start composing this piece in the summer. And so I think it's perfect for us to play here um, in a summer festival in such a beautiful place with such wonderful nature. And the second movement, it's, it's so, it starts so warm and almost like a hug, you know? Um, and it prepares this ground floor for a movement that you think would be just throughout the whole movement so lyrical and you have bird calls again. But then in the middle of the movement, it becomes dramatic and somewhat even angry. Um, but then it goes back to more lyrical moments. And so you have all these multiple personalities or mood swings uh, that was a characteristic of Dvorak's music. Um, this, the third movement, actually, it's interesting because in a, in a romantic symphony of that time, you would probably expect a schizo. Um, and if it was an early symphony or a classical symphony, you would expect a minuetto and a trio. But here, he puts a waltz. And it's interesting because it's a waltz and there is a, a, another second section. Uh, some people would call that a trio. And then you have a coda. But it is a waltz. It is a dancing waltz written in 3-8. There's some accents that are typical of a, a waltz, and so which makes that a, spe a special um, Czech Bohemian kind of waltz. Dvorak um, grew up in um, in a time when the it was the Austro-Hungarian Empire, today we know as Czech or uh, Czech Republic. But he grew up listening to so many different kinds of music and for sure street music, from military bands to street music musicians, gypsies. And so all these elements are in his music. And so he applied that a lot in, in his music. And here you have this kind of different, but yet delightful walls that I think he works almost as an intermezzo for the last movement, the fourth movement. Um, it's a short movement, and it kind of, you know, leads you and prepares you, calms you down to, again, um, a lot of excitement. And the last two movements, they're not connected, but they go from one to the, the other fairly quickly. And the last movement starts with a trumpet fanfare. But it's not a military trumpet fanfare. It's not calling for announcing a military you know, march or... No, it's, it's kind of a, a, a dance call somehow. And, uh, but it's given to the trumpets. The orchestration of this piece, actually, it's also very conservative. Um, but there are two moments, and they happen in the first movement, actually, that uh, Dvořák uses uh, the piccolo and there are another moment Dvořák uses uh, the English horn. The English horn has only a few bars of um, 
kind of an echo of a melody uh, of a bird call, but the piccolo has one note, one sustained note, and then goes one octave and one sustained note, and that's it. So I think that gives us the hint that not only, you know, there's so much of the Czech folk element and dance and nature um, and his personality and character in the music, but he also was looking for color. And so that's why he used the piccolo for only one note. Good thing we're not hiring an extra for that. Talking about being financially not responsible, but uh, the second flute plays the piccolo and sustained that one note. So the last movement again, the main voice are giving to the cello section. And after the fanfare, the trumpet fanfare, the cello comes with this again beautiful longing and um, sweet uh, melody. And that keeps repeating and evolving and uh, some, in a way, even some var variations of that. Um, and then the, it, it starts getting more and more exciting. And then the piece basically explodes in excitement with horses and um, um, for a long time, you have, you know, a lot of different textures, um, a beautiful solo that is given to the flute and, you know, a lot of folk elements. Um, but then, towards the end of that movement, you have again the cello playing exactly what they play at the beginning of the movement with a different dynamic, a softer dynamic, without crescendo and diminuendo, without many effects, uh, in a way less expressive as kind of you have a distant memory of the beginning of that movement. And, and I think in a way it is Dvorak remembering his, um, his childhood and kind of a, um, a distant memory of his childhood growing up with all these elements that we've been talking about. And that continues in such a beautiful and touching way um, with the cello. And then it goes back to another flute solo and he explores a lot of textures. And then when you think the piece is kind of dissolving or ending in this beautiful calm way, the pieces explodes again in excitement, um, to a triumphal conclusion. Um, I love the endings of Dvorak's music. Uh, so many composers, they struggle with ending a piece. Beethoven could get over of one chord and repeating that chord 20 times. And you, it is really a difficult thing for a composer to end a piece. And Dvorak, I think, did in many of his pieces in a masterful um, way. And so it is one of my favorite symphonies for sure. And I'm so excited and so happy to be here conducting uh, your festival orchestra in the beautiful city of Bellingham. Uh, I already had a rehearsal with the orchestra and I can tell you, wow, this orchestra is superb and the commitment of the musicians on stage and the willingness to perform at the highest level and, um, and make, make great music together, uh, it's really touching. And so I hope you enjoy this wonderful program. Happy to be here conducting for you and I hope to see you back. Thank you.